Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first review, first episode of M4 Movies uh, podcast, where I'm just going to um, say my my opinion on a uh, on a newer movie in general. Just shoot the shit. Just let you know how I think of uh, of like a newer movie. Uh, for this first episode, I'm going to be looking at. Uh, a brand new movie in a well-known, very popular uh, horror uh, franchise that's been going on uh, since way back in '96. Uh, we've had obviously this is uh, the sixth movie in the series. Uh, we had '96, '97, uh, uh, 2000, 2011, uh, last year, and currently. This year. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about the Scream franchise. Yes, the franchise is still going on. And it is still going on very, uh, very strong. There's no... Um, uh, this this new one uh, was not a disappointment at all. Uh, I do think, in my opinion, uh, that this is probably the third? Third best? Uh, I think my order would probably go the original one, uh, which is uh, one of the one of the best '90s horror movies of all time. Uh, last year's Scream, uh, which I mean, technically, I mean they shouldn't have called it Scream Five if they were doing the continuation of it. It just it just sounds better if you're just like Scream Scream Five because if you're in conversation and you're like you're like, hey, did you see Scream? And they'd be like, what? The original one or 2022? So, um, and then we got, uh, I would definitely go Scream, Scream 6 uh, for the third one. And then like 2, 2, 4, and 3 probably. Um, so, I think that's a, that's a pretty good order just off the top of my, uh, of, of my head. Is, uh, well, before I get into uh you know you know the direct direction and cast and whatnot uh i did see this in uh in the uh, uh mx40 uh theaters uh if you've ever been in there it's literally like you're you're uh, uh sitting up uh sitting on a music park ride uh, and, and it's just it's just shaking, and then there's extra uh, gust of wind that blows in your face, and and uh, moisture, and and uh, just just a whole bunch of uh, uh, you know lights and stuff. And sometimes sometimes it gets kind of a, a bit foggy up in the front part of the screen, uh, but this time around there wasn't a lot of fog. Uh, but I gotta say that this is probably one of the better um, experiences that I've had uh, watching a watching a movie in MX40, and the slasher horror movie really does work out really well with it. Uh, every single uh, stab, uh, gunshot blast, uh, any you know fighting going on, uh, you feel it. You feel literally like every single, um, I'm just going to repeat myself, every single stab, like if somebody's getting stabbed multiple times, you, you feel it in the seat. It, it, it makes sure that you get your, uh, your, your money worth. Um, and uh, all the jump scares, <laughs> if there's a jump scare, you're going to feel it. And uh, any, any splatters of blood. Uh, you get that extra uh, wetness, just like right in your face, um, and, uh, and 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 even there's a scene where there's a uh, like a house party type thing, and and uh, there is uh, at a, like a like a fraternity or something. Um, you you get a a a smell, a scent of just like a party atmosphere, you know, uh, drinks going around. Uh, you might have some kind of um, 
cigarette or drug usage, uh, smoke, uh, just, just, you get that kind of party scent, you know? Um, so, so that's something that I really did, uh, notice. And so, um, yeah, the, the, the M MX-40, uh, was well worth, uh, checking that out in theaters. I, I, I would have liked to see, um, the 3D version, uh, because this was released on 3D. Um, but, uh, unfortunately this is the, uh, this is the only really, um, time that could work out for me. Uh, plus we just had a brief, uh, snowstorm here, um, in the Midwest. So I didn't really want to travel, uh, too far. Um, so I literally saw the movie right down the street from me. So it, it worked out for me, but, uh, so yeah, definitely. Um, if you can see this in some kind of, uh, major theater, you know, like an IMAX or a 3D or an MX-40, uh, I would definitely uh, recommend it. All right, so uh, this is directed by, uh, and if I screw up on these names, I'm sorry, uh, we got Matt uh, Bettinelli uh, Open and Tyler Gillette. Uh, these these guys also did uh, last year's Scream, uh, and then they did uh, Ready or Not, uh, which which I enjoyed both. Um, so so they're a really good um, team of horror directors, uh, and they know what to and they and they know what they're doing, and they have done um, these two movies, these two sequels, uh, justice, uh, to, to Wes Craven's, um, four movies. And I think it's in good hands. No, no matter how many more, uh, sequels we get, uh, in this franchise, uh, as long as these guys are still doing it, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe do about one, one more sequel or, or, or another, um, I think it's I think it's a franchise that's in really good hands. So they did a really great job. Uh, I think the script was just as good as uh, last year's, and uh, I was never like I was never bored. Uh, it it seemed to go by really fast. This movie is clocking in about two hours, um, and uh, it it uh, it was fun. Uh, there was more m moments where where I laughed a few times, uh, and the majority of the characters are uh, are are pretty uh, uh, pretty interesting. There wasn't anybody that was just like meh. I mean, some of the new characters, I was like uh, okay, uh, but uh, but the the legacy characters uh, that they call them, um, you know, Sam, Tara. Uh, we had, uh, uh, of course, Gail Weathers, uh, Kirby, uh, they were all, they were all a lot of fun. It was really great to see, uh, you know, Gail and, 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 and Kirby back. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, I would say that my, that my favorite, <laughs> favorite character out of, out of everybody is probably Mindy. I'm pretty sure a lot of uh, movie buffs, movie fans will enjoy her her character. Uh, it was very much like Randy, uh, Randy from the original one. Uh, how how he was the horror uh, movie expert, and uh, yeah, so she's very much uh, like him. Went through the rules of this uh, of this franchise. Uh, and, uh, she even pointed out, uh, made it very, uh, real in, in, in our reality of, uh, of letterbox. Uh, she pointed out letterbox, uh, and, uh, and if you're not following me on letterbox, remember, uh, M4 movies, um, and, uh, so you can keep track of everything, uh, that I watch, uh, and, uh, and list, um, especially in the rankings of, of 2023, uh, 
uh, coming out. Which, by the way, uh, this was the uh, 65th movie that I've seen so far in 2023 with a 2023 uh, release. So I've seen quite a lot. The cast all together, um, I would give like an 8.1. Uh, I think they did, uh, like I said, a really good job. There was a lot of standouts. Uh, and uh, thank goodness, thank goodness they got, they still have uh, the voice of Ghostface, the original. Um, I'm pretty sure these movies will keep on going on until until Roger Jackson um, who's uh, 19, let's look at his age here, 1958. So as long as like he's still going around, uh, they basically have him, you know, will have him forever as as the voice of, of, of Ghostface. Um, and uh, so so all, all in all, uh, I would give the cast about an 8.1 uh, out of 10 for average that out. Uh, the cinematography was about an eight. Uh, there was some good, um, good scenes, um, good use of uh, of uh, you know, you know, space and and the heights of of New York City alleys and 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 whatnot. Uh, they really did use New York City uh, very nicely in, 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 a, in, a, in a background. Um, and so uh, I really did like that part of it. Uh, the special effects, especially with the blood, uh, the gore looked really great. This is really, really bloody. Uh, and, uh, and all of that just looked, uh, looked fantastic. It sounded fantastic with the sound. Uh, and uh, and I generally really like did like special effects, so about a seven out of ten on that one. Uh, production design. This is where it's it's a real highlight. Um, like I said, the the New York City settings uh, they really did added a lot to the streets, to the to the alleys, to the dark corners, uh, the closeness of the apartments. Um, and just restaurants and that and that kind of that kind of reality, that kind of life style. I mean, I've personally uh, back in 2008, I've traveled uh, to New York City, so I've seen that, um, and and so I've seen that kind of nighttime element. Um, so, so somebody uh, who's never been to some some place like New York City. Uh, and only seen it through the movies. Uh, it's it's pretty much a, a lot of it's the same way. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and I just love the um, uh, the the various interior shots. Uh, there's a few. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much spoilers, uh, but there is a movie buff that uh, that his his apartment that he shares with his roommates. They're, they're really big uh, movie buff fans. So there was a lot of uh, posters and, uh, and just, just great. It looked like anybody's, um, you know, movie room, you could say that, that you see on, uh, you know, YouTube. And also I, uh, I really did like the, um, there's a setting, this was in the trailer, so it's not a, so it's not a spoiler, but there was a setting where kind of like a shrine, kind of like museum of all the ghost face, um, costumes throughout the movies and, uh, and the murder weapons and clothing, uh, props, uh, that, uh, that, you know, somebody had brought together, Put in this old abandoned uh, type of a movie theater, and uh, it it really did work really well. And I really did like that that aspect, um, that look of the of the movie, and also just like just like in general, um, the different locations. Um, 
like outside, I think it was uh, Central Park. Um, it might not have been the Central Park, uh, but I'm not too sure. Um, but uh, but that looked really great. And being able to go out and about uh, in the city, it, it worked really, really well. So, yeah. And especially, uh, like I said, in the alleys, um, um, you do... It looked great. It looked it looked really great. Um, so I'm going to give the production design like a nine out of ten. I, I really did generally like it. Oh oh, I almost forgot. Uh, one of my best uh, favorite uh, sequences in this movie is the uh, is the subway train sequence. Um, I, I I just loved that this movie was set uh, around. I'm thinking it was set around Halloween. Uh, and uh, and so, so everybody was in their costumes, and including including Ghostface, there was at least oh man, there was at least like eight people dressed as Ghostface, uh, uh, and and you get that you get that crampness of a uh, of a subway uh, car, and and you're just like you're looking around and. Like you see Ghostface, but you're like, oh, that's that's probably suspicious. That's that's, that's probably going to be a killer. But then it turns out that it's not. It's just a regular guy just you know out enjoying the the uh, the holiday. And so uh, and so I really did uh, love the uh, subway sequence and and it, it going it going dark uh, when there was no light there. Um, and it, it just, it, it worked really, really well. And I really love that part of it. Uh, and then the uh, musical score. Uh, so production design, about a 9 out of 10. Uh, musical score uh, was about an 8 out of 10. Uh, I really did like that it brought uh, brought back composed music um, throughout the series. Um, it's, just, it's just really great to hear. Uh, little bits of composed music that we've that we've grown up with in the past uh, twenty seven years, yeah, twenty seven, twenty uh, twenty six years, uh, and uh, I I enjoyed majority of the of the songs, the the lyrical songs. Um, had a really good time with those. Uh, so, so eight out of ten. I, I generally did enjoy the soundtrack uh, and also the uh, the composed music. Uh, the costuming and props was about a nine out of ten. Uh, like Ghostface, um, you, you you just can't go wrong with Ghostface. I also enjoyed how how there was different types of um, of the Ghostface masks themselves. Uh, some of them were really falling apart, uh, and they really showed their age on them. Uh, and I love just the various uh, weapons, uh, clothing, all the all the different uh, museum uh, props and and whatnot. It looked really great. Uh, so nine out of ten in general on that. Uh, also the. Uh, the first 10 minutes is a 9, ending is a 9. Uh, it really did start off really well, and it ended um, great. And and if they do make a Scream 7, uh, I'll be I'll be ready for it. I'll, I'll, and uh, if they keep the same crew, uh, the same writers, uh, bring back all these new cast characters, uh, it, it should be a really... Uh, great movie. So 8.4 out of 10. Uh, good enough for an 8 out of 10. Uh, this is currently my third favorite movie of this year. That is behind Infinity Pool. And this was barely beat out by Cocaine Bear. Um, so I think Infinity Pool, I think they got about an 8.5. And Cocaine Bear was literally, literally like, like 0.5 short of of they were both 8.4s uh but uh it was literally it's 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 what it's like 8.4 
six or something like that, six compared to one or 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 whatnot. So it, uh, uh, so cocaine bear and and uh, scream six is uh, really really damn close. Um, but uh, but yeah, so it's uh, it'll probably end up in my um, probably at least my top thirty of, of the year. Uh, after we get more and more movies uh, uh, released. And so, yeah. So, there's just my thoughts on on Scream 6. Uh, like I said, I had a really fantastic time. I, I think any fans will enjoy this. Uh, they'll just have just, just, just a lot of fun. A lot of great kills. A lot of new kills. Uh the movie never really seems boring. It's just great to see this uh, ensemble, this cast, uh, in this new setting. I mean, I know, I know, New York has been in other uh, horror movies, especially like Jason Takes Manhattan uh, for Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, but just this, just this new newness, you could say, of uh, of um, reality. Where we're like, oh yeah, all these movies that they mention, all these horror movies, uh, and Letterbox is something that most of us movie fans, most of us horror fans, are used to to discussing, to talking about, to watching, uh, and uh, and it's just it's just really funny that 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 even though they 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 talk about uh, horror movies and actually keep their titles. Uh, stab is, is still scream is is still stab, even though it's pretty much like they know about the scream franchise, but it's but it's stab instead of scream. So yeah, um, but anyways, uh, that's it. That's it from me from my review. Like I said, definitely go see Scream Six. It definitely does live up, and it is a really good time. I plan on pretty much buying this on 4k i will add it to my uh, collection for sure and uh hopefully this goes on uh, spotify uh hopefully i can have more reviews in the future and it's winding down and so i would just like to um, say thank you so much for listening uh definitely go see it uh, look me up on instagram uh youtube m4 movies uh, i also have if you are a physical media collector, uh, I do also have a Blu-ray menu slash DVD menu as well as a 4K menu uh, channels, two different channels. You can find that on um, on YouTube. If you're a part of my Infra Movies YouTube channel, I think I still have links to that in my in my uh, channel uh, description. Uh, links to those channels. Uh, the Blu-ray menu and DV menu, I I upload almost daily, um, and so that's going really well. And as well as uh, Twitter, whenever I feel like tweeting something out, uh, or um, Letterbox for sure. Uh, pretty much all M for movies, uh, M F O U R movies. Uh, I didn't need to spell that out because you guys can actually see um, uh, the title <laughs> on this uh, podcast. So I really do appreciate everybody and uh, and whoever decides to listen to this uh, review of Scream 6 now in theaters. So definitely go check it out. Uh, this is going to make, oh man, this is going to make a lot of money. Uh, I, see, I see easily $100 million. Uh, if it doesn't make its money back and then some, there's a problem. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was great. It was great. I had a great time. I cannot wait to uh, own it on 4K. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for me. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, looking forward to uh, to starting up this, this review uh, podcast. And uh, get my opinions out there. So, all right. Thank you so much. And uh, you guys enjoy your your uh, your week, your weekend. And uh, take care, everybody. What's your favorite?